job of arousing manhood within a people that have been taught for so many centuries that they are nobody is not easy. So they very skillfully uh, made you and me hate our African identity. Maybe the English language should be reconstructed so that teachers will not be forced to teach the Negro child 60 ways to despise himself and thereby perpetuate his false sense of inferiority. And in hating our features and our skin and our blood, why we had to end up hating ourselves. It made us feel inferior. We must no longer be ashamed of being black. We should own and operate and control the economy of our community. And once you and I go into business, we own and operate at least the businesses in our community, what we will be doing is developing a situation wherein we will actually be able to create employment for the people in the community. We hope to build housing from Mississippi to North Carolina using Negro workmen, Negro architects, Negro attorneys, and Negro financial institutions throughout. And with millions and millions of dollars in income coming to the Negro community. Now another basic challenge is to discover how to organize our strength into economic and political power. Whenever you find a man who's in a position to show power against power, then that man is respected. But you can take a man who has power and love him all the rest of your life. You won't get anything out of it. What is needed is a realization that power without love is reckless and abusive and that love without power is sentimental and anemic. The only thing power respects is power. There is nothing wrong with power. They would drop bombs on African villages that would blow that village apart and everything in it. Man, woman, child, and baby. No outcry, no sympathy, no support, no, no concern, because the press didn't project it in such a way that it would be designed to get your sympathy. With skillful manipulating of the press, they're able to make the victim look like the criminal, and the criminal look like the victim. There's something strangely inconsistent about a nation and a press that will praise you when you say be nonviolent toward Jim Clark, but will curse and damn you when you say be nonviolent toward little brown Vietnamese children. Yet the United States government went and got Shonda in Spain and put him as the uh, head of the Congolese government. Imagine this, this is criminal. Here's a man who's a murderer. So the United States takes him, puts him over the Congo and supports his government with your tax dollars. And he turns, his first move is to bring in South Africans who hate everything in sight. He hires those South Africans to come and kill his own Congolese people. And the United States again, Pays their salary. And who are we supporting in Vietnam today? It's a man by the name of General Key who fought with the French against his own people and who said on one occasion that the greatest hero of his life is Hitler. This is who we are supporting in Vietnam today. Oh, our government. And the press generally won't tell us these things, but God told me to tell you this morning. The truth must be told. If you asked an average person to compare Malcolm X with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., odds are they'll tell you about the perceived differences between these two men as if the relationship between them is that they're polar opposites who hold these opposing views about what needs to be done to establish freedom, 
justice and equality for marginalized and oppressed people in this country. But as you've just seen and heard, for the most part, their ideas don't oppose each other. In fact, the opposite is true. Not only do they not oppose one another, but their ideas are extremely similar and in some cases identical. So what we hope to accomplish with this short film is to eliminate this myth. The myth that Malcolm X and Dr. King were opposites, or that their views were for the most part opposed to one another. And the method by which we'll eliminate this myth is by simply listening to their words. We're going to listen to both men speak on the issue of black pride and black power. And you'll be surprised at just how similar their ideas are. And we feel it's important that people understand this because the issues that Dr. King and Malcolm X agreed on are all issues that still confront us today. So again, the issues that we'll examine in this short film are black pride and black political and economic power. We often come to different campuses and different communities to do a more detailed and interactive version of this presentation. In that version of the presentation, we also examine Dr. King and Malcolm X's ideas about systemic revolution, what Dr. King called a revolution of values. We also look at each man's analysis of the mass media. Another thing we look at is U.S. foreign policy. We look at Dr. King and Malcolm X's assessment of how the United States conducts its wars and why they go to war in the first place. Again, those are some of the things we talk about when we do the live presentation. But for this short film, we're going to focus on Malcolm and Martin's ideas about black pride and black power.